At number 10 we have an octopus nursery. Eight legged alien looking things with suction cups all over their arms and beaks for mouths. Octopus are creepy looking things and to top it all off they can camouflage like a navy seal and they are super smart. If these are the kind of things that make your skin crawl then just running into one of these guys would probably freak you out. Well on the underwater expedition at the Davidson Seamount there was a rather shocking discovery. They had a remote probe that was on the ocean floor around 10,000 feet and they came across which seemed to be an octopus that was next to not just one, not just two, but a group of 1,000 octopuses in a nursery. They were all there laying their eggs and using the heat from the volcanic vent to keep them warm. I would hate to be the guy who accidentally steps into that crack and then gets devoured by thousands of sticky arms. But if you're at 10,000 feet underwater, you probably are already screwed. In our number nine spot, we have the Atlantic wolffish. The Atlantic wolffish kind of looks a bit like a blob with very sharp canine like teeth. So sharp that it can crush the shells of sea urchins and crabs very easily and that is what they eat. They can live at depths of 2,000 feet and apparently they can produce an antifreeze that keeps their blood pumping in freezing water. This fish's overbite and general scary look definitely terrified us humans when we discovered it. In our number 8 spot we have the red lipped bat fish. This fish is found near Peru at the depths of 10 to 249 feet. They eat small fish and small invertebrates including shrimp, crabs, worms and mullets. They aren't good swimmers, but they use their pectoral, pelvic and anal fins to walk on the ocean floor. Like this. <laughs> anal fins. <laughs> what? I'm 5. <laughs> I wonder if whoever discovered this fish was more confused than scared to have found a fish that literally looks like it's wearing red lipstick. In our number 7 spot we have the dragonfish. The deep sea dragonfish lives about 2000 feet below the surface and is most certainly a ferocious predator. I mean look at their teeth, they are clearly born to be fierce. They are quite long coming up on 6 and a half inches and yes they do have wing like fins which is definitely why they were called dragonfish. They are also called Called the sea moth, which, yeah, no, <laughs> that makes them seem less cool because, you know, moths are a pain. So we're gonna stick with the dragonfish. Little is known about their history thus far, which is just another reminder that the ocean is huge and we have so much more to learn. In our number six spot, we have the Dumbo octopus. I can't think of the Dumbo octopus without thinking, aww, so cute, it's like Dumbo. It has protruding ears that are like fins and that is why it was given the name. Its fins act like propellers and propel them upwards, like so. Personally, I don't think this creature is very scary, maybe because the cute name put it in a positive light, but if you are someone that feels uncomfortable looking at a cluster of dots, don't look at its legs. I am that person and just looking at its suction cup identical legs made me a tiny bit queasy. Apparently there are about 15 different Dumbo octopus species which is pretty cool and also they live in the depths of at least 13,000 feet. They are the deepest living octopus known to man as of yet. They measure to about 8 to 12 inches and they can measure to about 6 feet high. They are quite hard to spot as they are known for their ability to camouflage. Pretty cool. In our number 5 spot we have the frilled shark. The frilled shark can live to depths of up to 5 5,000 feet which means they were most likely not spotted by a casual diver. This eel like shark has 6 pairs of gills that are across its throat. It usually swallows its prey whole but its 300 teeth would also guarantee that its prey would most likely not escape anyway. This fish is referred to as a living fossil as it looks so similar to its ancient ancestors. Honestly this fish looks old and worn and a little bit like a snake. Honestly it looks like it could be the demon of the sea. In some pics of this shark it looks truly terrifying and everyone including divers would be scared if they were ever to stumble across this fish. In our number 4 spot we have the giant squid. The giant squid is indeed giant. It is 40 feet long, that's about 12 meters. Yeah, this definitely scared the breath out of some diver somewhere upon its discovery. It is one of the largest animals without backbones in the world. They live at depths of 1,000 to 2,000 feet, which definitely has made them hard to study. Apparently, they also have the largest eye in the animal kingdom as their eyes are about 10 inches in diameter. They are carnivores, so they usually eat deep sea fish, young sharks, smaller squids, and humans. Just joking, but honestly, I'm sure if they had the opportunity to eat you, I bet you they would. 
In our number three spot, we have the gulper eel. Okay guys, let's be real, a diver wouldn't be able to see most deep sea fish because, well, we can't necessarily dive into the deep sea yet, <laughs> lol. However, I'm sure divers have seen them via pictures and after being captured in deep sea fishing nets, so there's that. The gulper eel is one of them that was most likely seen because of a deep sea fishing net. This fish has one large mouth and its mouth is bigger than its whole body, which makes it a tad scary to look at. It usually feeds on small croatians, so there's really nothing to fear. It wouldn't eat you. It has a long pink fluorescent tail that helps attract prey with its light. I personally think it is quite chilling to look at and would love to know if you agree in the comment section below. In our number two spot, we have the hatchet fish. So many scary fish. I'm gonna have to put on something funny after this, like the Big Bang Theory, my newest obsession. I know, I'm late to the game, whatever. Yeah, girl is a late bloomer. The deep sea hatchet fish basically looks like an alien with its big bulging eye. Oh, and you know, it glows in the dark. Yeah, glows, pretty cool. Which honestly makes it maybe one of the coolest fish. Cool, but terrifying. It has a row of luminescent organs lining its belly. It apparently mimics daylight above, which throws off predators below it. They live at depths up to 3,200 feet. They have a pretty large mouth that is tilted upward and opens wide to scoop up meals. In our number one spot, we have the goblin shark. When this shark was discovered, surely everyone was terrified. It literally Really looks like a goblin trapped in a shark body. This creature is one of the most scary looking deep sea creatures that I have ever seen. Apparently they can be as long as four meters, but some hypothesize that they can be longer. They have very long snouts and protruding mouths that hold many, many teeth that contribute to their scariness. They can crush their prey, such as shellfish, easily with their teeth. They can eat a fish whole, and that is usually what their diet consists of, rat tails and dragon fishes. They can weigh up to 460 pounds. Their lifespan is quite long at 30 to 35 years. Even though it looks quite terrifying, it does have a flabby body with small fins, so it can have quite sluggish movement. Kicking off the list at number 10, let's dive in. Ooh, Barracuda. Exploring the deep is dangerous if you're a diver, of course, not because of the deadly ocean life surrounding your every direction, but because if you come up too quickly, major health problems will follow. But if not that, probably a deadly barracuda. Equally as scary. This deep discovery was made by user Arira95. I'm pulling real events for this one from real deep sea divers. We're going to the real content for this one, so buckle up. One time when my parents visited Mexico, they went diving and my mom was slightly lower than my dad looking at the ocean floor. My mom had on a gold necklace that was floating in the water around her and it was a sunny day and a fairly shallow dive at this point, so it was sparkling. My mom looked below at all the critters when my dad grabbed her and started frantically shaking her arm to get her attention. I'm sweating reading this. She looked up and a barracuda was directly in front of her staring intently at that shiny necklace. She slowly moved up her hand to cover the necklace and they slowly and calmly moved away from it and it took off without bothering them anymore. But still pretty unsettling and taught my mom to be a little more aware of her surroundings when she's diving. I mean, fair, but I mean, no one expects a barracuda. Also, if your mom wants to dive with chains on, that's pretty sick. You won't catch her slacking. Even in the depths of the sea, she's like, I'm ready. I don't care who shows up. I don't care who I bump into. Water shoes and bling. Check and check. Let's go diving. At number nine, we have the Siberian Lake Monster. Of course, if we're doing a list of scary things that live underwater, we have to throw a giant mysterious sea monster on here. What separates the Siberian Lake Monster from other more popular guys that we have seen like Loch Ness and that kind of stuff is that underwater scans have actually picked this guy up. This thing is deep in Lake Labinkure and some radar has shown that it looks like a 33 foot long creature is living there. Now this is probably just a skeleton Skeleton, but if this thing is dead, it means that there was once a giant man-eating monster in this lake. I thought we were supposed to be safe in freshwater. They've nicknamed this thing the devil, so you know he's a good time and loves company. So next time you go up to the cottage and you're swimming in the water and you feel safe, remember there might be a giant monster lurking underneath the water ready to turn you into a side dish. At number eight, we have the blue hole. Now there are several blue holes in the world. There's one in Belize, there's one in the Red Sea, there's a giant one in my heart that was left there from when Reboot ended on 
a cliffhanger? How are you going to end a show that so many people fell in love with on a cliffhanger? I will never trust again. Well, this one is between Cape Verde and the Caribbean islands. Scientists are really confused about this thing. It's a crack in the bottom of the ocean floor and it's several thousand miles long. What's strange about this is there's no explanation of how this happened. It might have been tectonic plates moving around, but when this happened, the earth will probably start to repair itself and there's been no sign of this. My theory is this is where Godzilla goes to sleep at night. I mean, it seems like the most logical answer. It's either that or the gateway to hell. Like, come on, guys, I'm doing real science work here. At number seven, we have the Yanaguni Complex. This was discovered by scuba divers in the 1980s. I think that's the scariest part about this one. Could you imagine going scuba diving back in the 80s? The technology back then must have been a tube going up to some guy who would blast fresh air down to you using a bicycle pump. I don't even think they had decompression sickness figured out back then. The chances of you coming up the bends was probably super high. Well, if it wasn't for a few divers in Japan who were willing to sacrifice it all to look at some cool stuff, we wouldn't know anything about the Yanaguni complex. It's still a mystery as to what this thing is. It looks like some temples that might have existed thousands of years ago, but when the Ice Age decided to melt, it would have covered this entire area. This could be why an entire civilization got plunged underwater. Or the temple could have been on a cliff, and then when a massive earthquake hit, it knocked the temple into the water. But like everything in life, there are some haters who say this whole thing is just a natural rock formation. Some people just want to ruin everything. At number six, we have Anacora Sista Twista. One of the reasons why the underwater world is such a mystery is because we find things like this in there. Sure, there are beautiful things down there like bright fish and chubby marine mammals, but there's also the unknown, unidentified organisms like Anacora Sista Twista, which should be the name of an 80s hair metal band. But what is this thing? Well, it's a protist. And what is a protist, you may ask? Well, it's an organism that doesn't belong to any animal group, fungus, or plant group. What does that mean? I really have no idea, you guys. I think it means it could be an alien. Some alien came down to Earth for a swim and then scraped its knee on some coral, and now we have alien creatures running around the ocean, probably waiting for you to pee so it can swim up your pee hole and then work its way into your brain. It's really the only logical answer. At number five, we have the Bimini Road. How were the pyramids made? Was it aliens coming down to share their technology and secrets with us? Or was it just thousands upon thousands of slaves who sacrificed their lives and their spines to build them? Well, we don't know and we may never know, but the Bimini Road is another one of these mysteries. It's off the coast of the Bahamas and it looks like it could have been a pathway that was placed perfectly with giant slabs of rock. Similar to the way the pyramids were made, it seems that these large slabs of rock were too large to be moved by man and also like the pyramids, these giant slabs were also perfectly placed so well. So where does everyone's mind go when something like this happens? Well, magic or aliens. The logical answer is that this is a natural phenomenon of the water moving and hitting the rocks to make these formations. But people think that this was made using advanced technology from aliens and could have been the road to Atlantis. Honestly, I like the Atlantis theory much better. It's more fun. At number four, we have Colossal Squid. Yeah, this thing is a big no thanks for me. So everyone always talks about how there might be sea monsters out there. But this thing actually exists. There's never been one caught alive, but several have washed onto shores dead. And they are massive. The largest one ever discovered was 45 feet long and it was dead. So you know, there was an even bigger one out there that killed this guy. They don't even have suckers on their tentacles. They have hooks. Let me say that again. This squid has 10 giant arms covered in hooks. This thing is straight out of a horror movie. Scientists aren't even sure what something this big eats. They think it probably feeds on whales or your deepest, darkest fears. I wouldn't be surprised if the colossal squid works part time as a gatekeeper for hell. It makes me think that the old Greek stories about the Kraken might have been real. At number three, we have underwater circles. Giant formations of circles that are formed underwater and nobody knows how they got there. These mysteries were discovered off the coast of North Carolina, Florida, and Belize. Now, what are they. Like many things on this list, myself and the entire scientific community have no idea. But here are some theories. Maybe they were formed naturally by either two things, water currents or some sort of animal mating ritual. Another idea is that these things were made by ancient civilizations before the ice age. All these things would have been above ground and might have been art left over by some old timey tribes. And the third theory is that they look kind of like a bullseye, so it might be some sort of nuclear missile target and if you hit it hard enough, the explosion will cause some sort of major natural disaster like an earthquake or tsunami. Or if we're lucky, 
both. At number two, we have Megalodon. If you have a fear of sharks, you're gonna love this one. Megalodon was a prehistoric shark that was even bigger than the giant hook tentacle beast that was earlier on this list. If you've already forgotten about the colossal squid, it clocked in at around 45 feet long, where Megalodon was closer to 60 feet long. It was a 60 foot shark that could probably rip a blue whale in half in one bite. Well, maybe not that, but it was still a gargantuan creature with teeth the size of Brock Lesnar's fists. This thing wouldn't even chew you, it would just swallow you whole and then fart your skeleton out into the dark cold ocean. At number one on our list, we have Giant Eyeball. A mysterious giant eyeball washed onto the shore of a Florida beach back in October of 2012. I don't know any other kind of giant eyeball other than a mysterious one. There's no super common regular giant eyeball just lying around. But this is also Florida. This is the state where people smoke crack at weddings and kiss alligators on the lips, so maybe it's a little more common over there. Well, this giant eyeball was found by Gino Cavacci, and he didn't know what the hell to make of it, so he took it home and then stuck it in his freezer. Then he called the cops, and the cops came in and told him, we don't do giant eyeballs on the beach. You have to call the wildlife people. And then he called the wildlife people, and they were like, what the hell is that? And he was like, I don't know. I brought it to you guys to try and figure out what it is. And then some people were like, maybe it's a sea monster. And other people were like, no, it's probably from a marlin. And I think in the end, no no one really knew what the hell it was. But just so you know, there's giant eyeballs out there just laying around the beach sometime. Coming up at our number 10 spot, we have the ghost shark. The ghost shark lives in the deep ocean and lives for about 30 years. It looks like a ghost, but arguably even scarier than one. It eats primarily crabs, shellfish, sea urchins, and octopus. Apparently these fish have been around even longer than dinosaurs. Their big eyes can appear dead in the water, but glow when they are exposed exposed to light, giving them that ghostly look. Number 9. Venomous Sea Snakes Last year in the deep waters off Australia's coast, of course it's Australia, always Australia, a sea snake that was once thought to be extinct has been rediscovered. How fun. He's like, ah, psych, you thought. Just when you thought the ocean couldn't get even more dangerous, now we got new sea snakes to worry about. The short-nosed sea snake hasn't been seen in 23 years, and they would often live near Ashmore Reef. But last year, divers found one 67 meters below the surface in the twilight zone, which is pretty wild. Just lurking in the dark, just hanging out, meditating. The Australian Institute of Marine Science is responsible for this discovery, and the team calls this a second chance to protect and further understand the species. And an up-close personal encounter is brought to life from this diver. Apparently, this happens from time to time before major storms. Snakes can sense an oncoming storm, so what they try and do is latch onto something heading in the direction towards shore. So they don't have to burn energy and they can just grab onto like a barrel or something and then just, you know, make its way there. Pretty smart. So this diver was exploring, nothing was going crazy or anything like that, and then he felt a snake wrap onto his leg because he felt a storm was coming in. The diver didn't even know that the storm was coming. The snake did, and he wrapped its snake self around his leg. As soon as I was in the shallows, it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. That was from a diver named Specialist Celery. Great name, also terrifying experience. I don't like snakes in water or on land. Next, number eight, surprise tiger shark. Yeah, not something you want to see diving in the deep, a tiger shark. A glowing shark, left shark, I don't care. I want none of the shark smoke. This deep sea discovery comes from user Stormcutter, Sick name, a little bit better of a diver name. They say, I know a guy who was out diving for crayfish and lobster by the ocean. Also, the I know a guy trick, it was totally you. Don't lie to us. Crayfish often hide under the rocks, so as he was diving, a tiger shark emerged from a cave and rammed him, breaking his arm and ribs. <laughs> this guy got shucked by a shark, that's insane. He said the shark was testing him out. Yeah, I'd say. That's pretty sweet, man. I'm glad you survived, honestly. I bet you couldn't wait to tell people what happened. You're like, oh, my ribs? Yeah, I got sideswiped by a tiger shark. Yeah, he's feeling testy. You know how tiger sharks do. If you're wondering what that experience may have looked like, uh, this is footage of a rare tiger shark in New Zealand lurking in the deep. Number seven, Humpback Mama. This deep dive happened about a year ago. A diver named Sidetrack38, that's their username, not their legal name, although that would be pretty sweet. Sidetrack38, he's like, what's up? They were exploring the ocean one afternoon when all of a sudden they got charged by a mother humpback whale. The divers shared their experience online, saying, her curious calf had swam around us and we were between her and the calf. Two of us never even saw her coming. We were watching the baby, but our third diver, 
Saw her come. She kicked down and swam under us last minute. We didn't see anything until that 60 foot freight train passed just underneath us. Whales are beautiful. They're beautiful but terrifying creatures, my friend. Glad you didn't get a broken rib or back in this case because whales, they like to go pretty deep. Just a view. Just trying to figure us Incredible. out. Incredible. Oh, yeah, this is amazing. Justin, do you want to lower off? <laughs> Look at that view. I hope we're getting screen captures of this. Number six, Mako Shark. Mako sharks are one of the fastest sharks in the world. I'll start by saying that. Just get that fact in your head. Given this list so far, I would also start sweating if I were you. This is a scary one. This deep dive horror story comes from username One Dumb Diver. Great name. They clearly made this account just to share this occasion. So let's dive in. Nowadays, we dive with shark shields, which emit electronic pulses that freak the sharks out and keep them away. But back then, what we used was essentially a chainmail sleeve. The idea being that sharks hate the taste of metal, so if you give it your arm, it'll bite down, decide you're gross, and then move along. So I wait, it comes over, and I make a perfect move to give it my arm. However, just before the crunch, the crunch, it occurred to me that I had left my sleeve on my bed. Now I had a huge open gashing wound on my arm from the bite in open water and I trailed blood everywhere. Not an ideal scenario. So once the shock finally wore off, you realize that you're in salt water and salt and open wounds, they don't feel good. In a panic, I dropped my weight belt and shot up to the surface without any sort of waiting period. Not great. Because I hadn't been paying attention to the currents, I was approximately a quarter mile downstream of my boat, which meant that I had to swim back up to it. After getting bitten by a shark, imagine having to swim, that is a nightmare scenario. Glad you're okay. Also, you're not a dumb diver. You're just, you're experiencing the things. You're figuring it out. You're doing great. You're brave. I don't even like going in lakes. Number five, more sea snakes. Coming from Patrick667, about a year ago as well, they posted, so three days ago, I went snorkeling off Mimba Island in Zanzibar. Everything went normal and we started heading back. So I grabbed my net and I put my black fins, my black mask, snorkel and black wetsuit inside. Once back ashore, I grab my bag, jump off the boat and head to the rental office to return said equipment. At that point, I feel my bag is moving somehow. At first look, it seemed like a flat black worm squirming quickly. After rotating the bag, I realized I was looking at only the tail of a one meter long black sea snake, one of the most venomous reptiles ever, trying to get out of the net, like in the lobby. How it got there, I have no freaking clue. That is a nightmare scenario. Imagine being like, thanks so much, I had a great time. Here's a sand dollar. <laughs> also, don't mind the venomous snake. Number four, the frilled shark. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this dinosaur, the frilled shark, just hanging out, just lurking about 870 meters below the surface. So if you're anywhere around there, watch out. This one looks like an eel almost. It's so scary looking, it's so slippery and quick. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long and they fight in the dark. They don't need to see to attack you, which is pretty terrifying considering all these deep dive stories are all in the pitch black. So unless you're a deep diver, you're not really gonna run into the frilled shark. Have you ever dealt with one of these? Are you a diver? Are you watching this because you're a diver? Please comment down below if you are. Comment some of your personal experiences. These were a nightmare to read. I couldn't even finish half of them. Everything is so dangerous and so fast underwater. Number three, snapping shrimp. This little guy can literally create a sonic boom as it attacks you, that's how fast it is. You won't see him coming and neither did this diver. Here's a clip of a mantis shrimp punching through a diver's gear. Yeah, right through their water shoes. Bam! Ow, Ow. that really hurt. They're so quick, oh my God, they're tiny, but they, they really hit. They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs. These little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers per hour. And in doing so, a large air bubble is created and because this you know, Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the left hook, the following pop is around 200 decibels. The sound alone can stun its prey and if they're lucky, it sometimes kills them. That's how you wanna go out. You don't wanna go out with one of these Superman punches to the neck. Number two, comb stars. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea what's in our oceans. We discover some crazy shit every year. Some deep sea fish with bioluminescence are for sure aliens, while others are just natural predators. That looks scary. Like the comb star, for example. This guy was not in Finding Nemo. He would have been a weird addition. A comb star is a starfish that contains tetrodoxin, which is this deadly neurotoxin that can cause paralysis. Yeah, Finding Nemo, that movie would be over in eight minutes if this guy was there. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. So if you have a mice problem, Honestly, you can call one guy. It's a very specific weird call, but I know how you can do it. A little bit of tetrodoxin. Tetrodoxin? Tecrodoxin. That's what it's called. And finally coming in at number one, the electric eel. Aw, oh, 
awesome. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Great. The moray eel, first of all, don't do what he just did. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. That's not smart. It's not a great dame. You don't want to do that. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off in like two seconds. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. Yeah, just like that MGMT song that's now stuck in our heads. As its name suggests, there's types of eels that can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti. Appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery, this eel can release a shock up to 860 volts, which is more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. A swimming wall plug that gets hungry. Nice, we love nature. I'm never swimming again. <laughs> <laughs>